In our previous episode of Market Journal, we talked about boom-bust cycles in agriculture and if the current financial environment was indicative of another bust. That conversation came from the four-state crop insurance workshop in Grand Island, where we also spoke with Nebraska Farm Business Inc.'s Tina Barrett. We talked with Tina about the current farm debt load in Nebraska and analyzing input costs. But to start, we asked what farmers can be doing now that harvest is finished or close to complete. Well, yeah, it's, it's always funny because after harvest, everybody says we don't have anything to do, but there's plenty to do. Certainly, um, gearing up for some tax planning is probably on most people's mind um, and getting some things figured out there. Um, and it's going to be a little bit different this year than it has been the last couple. So. Uh, for the first time, we're starting to look at needing to bring in some income instead of trying to figure out how we're going to spend some money. So um, certainly some differences there. What are the things they can be getting ready for tax season, sort of uh, rounding up all the paperwork and whatnot? Well, certainly for some producers, it's, it's getting the books done for the year and that they haven't done all year long um, and, and getting that taken care of. And so that's certainly number one priority if, if you haven't done that, that we need a good solid set of books. Um, you know, but I think it's also important that we have a good handle on what the yields were so we can kind of get a good gauge of where the accrual income was as well, um, what we're looking at pushing into next year, um, because tax planning kind of needs to be more than just a two-month decision. What's your message to producers as they get ready for an off-season where we know that margins are getting much, much tighter? You know, I think it's important that they, you know, already they're going to be already having to make decisions on 16 seed and fertilizer, and um, it's going to be really important that we take a look at those decisions and how they affect bottom line. Um, it's, it's often fun to look for ways to maximize yield, but we want to make sure that when we're, when we're upping that yield, that the cost is not more than what we're going to get out of it. You know, we certainly don't want to be spending more um, than what we're going to get back. So, you know, taking a look at how that's going to affect net income more so than gross income. Um, you know, certainly we got to always watch for marketing opportunities um, and those sorts of things. Um, and then also from the non-farm side, of watching those family living costs and that's you know really something that we can't just look at at the end of the year but we really need to be working on all year long. Is there an easy rule of thumb with family living in place that you can cut or an amount that you should be shooting for or is it a case-by-case -case basis? You know it's a tough thing um, you know and a lot of times I mean there's certainly things that you know kind of seem like a home run of cutting vacations or um, those sorts of expenses out um, but oftentimes they're not going to get there and the reality is it's probably a matter of cutting um, a little bit out of every category um, and trimming things back is what's really going to make the, uh, make a difference uh, more so than just cutting those few high ticket things and a lot of times we don't look at those things as as an additional cost but you know anytime we're eating out instead of cooking at home you know that we know it costs more um, or uh, just you know wearing the same clothes for a little yeah. bit longer rather than replacing them you know, more often. So, um, th you know, those sorts of things are probably what we need to take a look at. I was curious about Nebraska farmers' debt load today because Kansas, uh, a professor from Kansas talked about the amount of debt that was increasing in Kansas. Is that consistent with Nebraska that they haven't been able to eliminate debt over the last few years? Yeah, and uh, for a proportionate, uh, Nebraska's numbers are pretty similar, but, but significantly larger. So average Kansas debt was about 500,000, average debt in Nebraska was a million dollars. Um, but we certainly have seen that same increase and in doubling of debt in about the last 10 years. Why is that, that they haven't been able to cut that down? You know, there's a, there's a lot of reasons. I think, um, you know, we t today we talked a little bit about some of the management things of not wanting to sell some of the grain at the lower prices is going to cause some of that. Um, I think tax law has had a lot to do with it and the fact that we measured debt December 31st. So in December, we're, we've been busy prepaying, borrowing money to do that, holding the grain until January. So while we're not in trouble in a current position, current debt has been increasing dramatically. Um, and the same aspect on an intermediate standpoint with the equipment, we've been buying equipment, writing it off for taxes, putting on a five-year note, um, which has caused that intermediate debt load to increase. Um, so certainly have to watch you know, each of those categories of debt, but now we have to reduce debt with after-tax dollars uh, because we don't have a deduction for principal. So we have to keep taxable income up in order to reduce that debt down.